Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoints Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. You've heard their point. Now listen to the counterpoint. Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. We're coming at you on April 28th of uh, 2021, uh, about four months into the Biden administration and a lot to talk about. But before we get into any of that, let me introduce you to our panel. In our upper left-hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Everett. He is a pilot in the state of California. And in our upper right-hand corner, we have Leon, the word Brathwaite, last word in liberty. He is a retired engineer in the state of California. <coughs> My name is Jason McPhee, and I will be your host today. Uh, so let's uh, jump into it. Uh, uh, <coughs> Biden's foreign policy. Uh, so I guess, uh, you know, not too long ago, he announced that he's going to be pulling all of the troops out of Afghanistan. Finally, like 20 years after we went in there to, um, you know, uh, address the uh, knocking down of the World Trade Centers. Um, but <clears throat> this has been 20 years, literally. And um, it, it's kind of funny, though, because normally that would sound like a good thing. I mean, if we're, you know, libertarians are sitting here thinking, hey, the government's actually... <laughs> Yeah, I finally started to stop doing wars. But uh, it's funny because Trump had already said they were going to pull out and he was going to do that apparently in May. And now Biden has essentially pushed it to 9-11 of this year. Now, I'm not sure that 9-11 is particularly strategically objective. I mean, strategically important other than, you know, maybe, you know, they, they, they want to do some ceremony about it. So they're going to delay pulling out for about, you know, six months or so. Anyways, uh, you know, I guess so, so, sort of a mixed bag then, but uh, what do you guys think about that? Well, uh, I guess I'll go first. Um, <clears throat> yeah, a couple of things. Uh, f f first of all, yeah, this whole, uh, yeah, let's wait. Uh, gosh, the people that may die in June, July, oh, May, because it was supposed to be May 1st. So May, June, July, and August, and then the, the first 10 days of September. Those, uh, yeah. What do you, what's Biden going to say to the parents of the of the uh, um, military people over there that die between now and then, as to what 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 did they die for? For what reason, Joe? Uh, did those people die? Uh, that's that would be a good question for them to ask Joe Biden. Um, of course, they'll never be able to, but. Uh, the uh, the so the first thing is a symbolism nonsense. Now, far be it for me to be um, uh, ungrateful for a president to pull us out of a stupid, complete waste of of uh, everything uh, like the war in Afghanistan has been. Oh, wait a minute! I shouldn't call it Afghanistan. I should call it by its its uh, famous moniker, the graveyard of empires, because that's what it is. And but secondly, the, the second point I'd like to make is that these these wars have um, have gotten to the point now where they're waged from afar. So uh, this could continue. In other words, we the United States of America, I should say, the government of the United States of America can continue can continue to wage war in Afghanistan like they have um, uh, increasingly in in uh both uh, there, Syria, Iraq, where they wage war from uh, parts, all parts of the United of the of the world, in drone attacks and in um, special forces attacks, and in um, private contractors. So that's how the wars are being waged now. So there's plenty of private contractors that are going to be left behind in Afghanistan. There's And there's going to be troops moved over next door to Pakistan to um, continue waging war and to do insertions and go in and continue to uh, waste American blood and treasure in the graveyard of empires uh, as we go on. So n number one, this whole s symbolism of the September 11th thing is, is completely complete. Uh, I can't even say it because it starts with the B and an S and uh, the, um, <clears throat> and then uh, furthermore is that we're really not out. Okay. So uh, maybe we won't have any actual 
flag wearing military people in there uh, except for special forces, but you know, they'll all be secretive. CIA, it's just it's just going to be CIA run special forces and drone bombings <laughs> continually uh, in Afghanistan, probably for the next three or four um, decades, at least, maybe more. I don't know. But that's that. Well, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, war is a nasty business. So there's no doubt about that. Okay, it's a really nasty business. It injure a lot of people and both in terms of life, liberty, everything. It, it, it's bad. It's, it's bad. But is it really? Is it a necessary evil? I think that is the question that we really, really have to answer. Is it a necessary evil? So, as as a libertarian, I am a small libertarian. I am asking the following question. Should we, as, um, as citizens of the United States, be against all foreign interventions? Well, if, if you want an answer from me. Yes, I, I do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it, personally, I don't think we should be the policemen of the world. I think that uh, um, it's, it's one thing if it's clearly part of you know, maybe a defensive effort, you know, if somebody is deciding they're going to, you know, maybe some kind of regime is trying to conquer the world and maybe we make an alliance to, to help stop that, maybe. But gosh, I mean, you know, the idea that our defense is in everybody else's country sounds a little like offense to me, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I mean, you know, that it, it's, you know, it's, it's almost like, you know, you know, hey, we're shooting to make sure that you don't shoot at us, you know, kind of a thing. <laughs> and, and now granted, you know, they, they did, you know, the Taliban that was behind the uh, knocking over of the World Trade Centers, you know, they were headquartered in Afghanistan. So, I mean, you know, there was a legitimate reason for us to attack. However, you also have to wonder how much of that is blowback from the fact that we want to have our defense everywhere around the world. You know, I mean, if we're literally in all of these different countries, like I, I think, uh, uh, gosh, what is it? Osama bin Laden? He was, uh, you know, I, I think out of Saudi Arabia was where he was really. He's a you know, Saudi. Kind of, He's a yeah, Saudi. Exactly. And I mean, you know, here we are constantly, you know, got our hands, you know, shaking hands with, you know, awful people like Saddam Hussein and uh, all these other terrible people. We're sitting there shaking hands with all these people, uh, you know, to <clears throat> to essentially promote our interests around the world. And I mean, that's, that's kind of horrific, you know, I mean, the idea that we're propping up these terrible people who are doing terrible things to the people in those parts of the world, we're not really leading by example. In that case, we're in bed with bad people. And, you know, I just think, you know, maybe we need to be a little more transparent and a little more hands off on this stuff and lead by example, you know, lead as a market where, you know, there to engage voluntarily with people. And we're not going to sit there and hand weapons to people who are, shooting their own citizens and gassing them and everything else well, uh, that's, well that's my I, th I think we could all agree that there's there's evil in the world okay and some of this evil has been projected by some people with with nuclear weapons okay quite frankly and i am not going to sit here and defend every action by the united states i'm not going to do that but are there some foreign wars that are justified take world war ii would we <clears throat> should we as a libertarian, should we have supported World War II? Um, okay, so uh, that, that's to answer Leon's question with a answer that's also related to the the World War II thing uh, is that uh, it was at, at bare minimum whether we supported World War II or or not, <laughs> at least it was a legal war. In other words, Congress declared war sure. and did it I according to that. the Constitution. Whereas this uh, war in Afghanistan with that 20-year-old, uh, now 20-year-old uh, authorization for the use of military force, that has been used as if it were a get-out-of-jail-free card. 60 pages, one page, 60 words, I'm sorry, 60 words on one page is the AUMF. And, and they have been using that even in Yemen and, uh, and uh, Somalia to go and fight for al-Qaeda. Uh, we have the United States of America. And uh, so this, 
this is number one. Al Qaeda is our enemy, according to the AUMF. Okay, I'm, I might remind everyone. And so, th this is totally illegal. Are not only that, but it's totally unpatriotic to be supporting our our enemy, the the Al Qaeda. Okay, and so so this kind of nonsense uh, is is totally off the table for me. But to answer Leon's question. Yes, if you if Congress can make and the president and whoever wants to go to war can make uh, the the um, can sell the idea to the American public and Congress declares, according to the Constitution, a war, the 90 day. Um, um, <clears throat> what is it? The 90 day, uh, the, the little little 90 day thing the president gets to do military. Well, in case of imminent threat, yes, yeah, 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 the 90 day. Right. Um, That's on, on, the, yes. Yeah, uh, the War Powers Act. The War, War Powers Act. Act. War yeah. Powers Act. Yeah. So that's fine. Okay, because that's going to take care of uh, 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 threats to uh, free <laughs> shipping and free trade. Okay, so the United States Navy is okay. It's okay with me if we're the uh, policemen of the world if we want to keep shipping lanes open and keep pirates off the backs of freighters and so on and so forth. I think we have a duty and an obligation as the richest nation to do that kind of thing. And we can legally under the 90 day uh, War Powers Act. So I'm the, so there you go. That the, the Congressional Declaration, which would have handled World War II, and um, and probably anything in the foreseeable future. However, this 20 years <laughs> nonsense has got to stop, okay? And I don't mean just, oh, we're gonna put the, the, the guys that wear the flag on their shoulders out into Pakistan and they'll just run in when we, and we won't tell anyone, okay? None of that. None of these endless drones. You know, if the Taliban takes over Afghanistan, I'm sorry. I'm not worried. Um, you know, in Des Moines, Iowa, they don't have to worry about freaking Afghanistan without even a navy, without even a coastline for crying out loud. And any way of, of doing anything are so impoverished. There's no way they can wage war against, you know, uh, your, your people in Spokane, Washington for crying out loud. So don't lie to us, you, you know, and uh, okay, just, okay, I'm done. I'm good, Cause now I'm no, getting excited. No, no, I'm, I'm just, I'm taking it all in Tim. Don't worry. I'm taking it all in. Yeah. So what? Okay. What? What about? Okay, fine. About the policeman of the world, I can understand the point. I, I, I actually the, have a rebuttal to that, but I'll let you go on first. <laughs> okay. Our, our first no, okay. Uh, okay. The policemen were not policemen of the world to go into every little civil war. And, you know, even if it has so-called our interests, our you know, our oil interests or whatever interests we think we have, uh, or that you know somebody is paying somebody else to to make sure you know, that, that we secure those interests. No, those, those are based on what Congress says, not the president. All these AUMFs are basically to allow the president to do what he wants. And that's, a, that's <laughs> no wonder they keep redoing it over and over and over because it just, oh, oh, wow, Congress just uh, totally abrogated their responsibility under the Constitution. So now it's all in my hands now. I get to be a little god. I get to be a little dictator. And every single president has just been more than willing and happy to do it. Okay, well, that's not constitutional. And the framers made it that way on purpose because that's what happens. This is what happens. You get Afghanistan for 20 years when and you give the power to the president. And that's why I side with Thomas Jefferson and all the other framers when I say this is a job for Congress and this nonsense has got to stop. But then, but Tim, you're making a distinction here. Yeah, what I'm hearing you say, right? You are making a distinction between congressional authorization for the use of military force in foreign lands and the formal declaration of war by Congress, you're making a distinction between that. Am I hearing that correctly? Yes. Okay. Well, okay, fine. Why Why then Why then, a declaration of war, which is really the use of mil the military power of the United States, why is that different from 
and we don't have a declaration of a war, but we have a, a, the authorization to use military force in foreign lands. I don't see the distinction between the two. Well, um, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, but I would I would submit that the distinction it has to have an end time with a with an actual uh, end result and and so on. Okay, so. Uh, same thing with it, whether it's a declaration or an AUMF, you can't just keep bringing up the same old one. It's like, seriously, 20 years later, the people that, that uh, bombed that, and helped and, and aided and abetted the people that bombed the Twin Towers and so yes. on at 9-11, they're, yes. they're still out there? Are you, are you kidding me? No, you're not. You're, are you serious? You're seriously going to use that as a reason to go kill people today and, and and not just a few you know in afghanistan it's, it's well over into the hundred thousands of people okay not as many and um you know mostly just poor dumb afghanis that just got in the way of these uh, uh of these drone bombs and and carpet bombs and everything else so you know and and you know some a bunch of them apparently taliban however the yeah, Taliban won. I mean, they got like two thirds of, of the country. After 20 years, they still control two thirds of Afghanistan. You would think with all these people dead, maybe maybe there'd be some some advancement in in, in uh, getting rid of the Taliban. But Tim, no, that's, that's what victory looks like. With oh, that's a victory. Yeah, <laughs> victory, yeah it kind of looks like it kind of looks like defeat to me. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then this cost, this cost now, you know, according to the Brown uh, Institute, what was it? 1.1 trillion or something or two points. It's, it's somewhere up there. It's somewhere yeah. up there. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's way up there. And that's not even counting all the people that got their legs blown off and their arms blown off. And they're still uh, going to uh, require care through, you know, so, so th this, uh, okay. Okay, 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 I'll tell you what. I'll give you, give me an AUMF then, okay? But do it according and have Congress uh, vote on it. But don't do it for 20 years when everybody's dead that you, on the last one, okay? Have an end date or an end result. And if you if you don't make the result, if you make the result, it's, it's over, okay? It's done. Throw it in the trash, it's done. It goes into the little history book of AUM, AUMFs that the that the federal government foisted upon the poor uh, deadbeat American public and the, and their well their future. By the way, all, I, you guys aren't seeing the screen share then right now, or is that no, not no, we're not, okay. no, we're not. Okay. No, we're oh, not. Oh, there it is. There it is. Yeah. There, it okay. is. there it is. Yes. Okay, yeah, so two point two six one trillion dollars. Yeah. Um, Brown University, two point two, uh, or almost two point three. But anyway. Um, and, and just yeah, to, there to you go. a few more. But I, 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 is, I, I well, well, yeah, yeah, hold, hold on. Just just uh, let me give some numbers real quick. So this is what our troop deployment has looked like over the period. Uh, we peaked in about 2011 with over 100,000 troops, and now we're down to just a sliver of that. And as far yep. as deaths go, um, this is the BBC, by the way, uh, uh, their numbers, <coughs> sourced by the UN, I guess. And... Um, uh, you know, and then, of course, uh, lots of civilian casualties, as you've been saying, Tim, you know, here in, in, in uh, Afghanistan. Yeah. So yeah, there you go. the, the, the yeah. one thing I would like to just add to this, this, this discussion is that let us not conflate acts of war with, with nation building. OK, I think um, Afghanistan was started off as a war and then it turned into nation building, which yeah. nation building is not a job of the military, without a doubt. So um, well, is it a is it a job of the U.S. federal government's taxpayers? Is it a job for them? Well, that's a well, that's a legitimate question. But we do have we um, when I say we, I'm talking about we taxpayers uh, re represented by our our our, um, our elected representatives. We do have a very huge uh, uh, foreign aid budget, and I mean, sure, some of us have raised objections about it. Have, it's used and all that, but that is used for, for nation building. Now, if you are telling me that the aspect of Afghanistan that turned into nation building, you find objectionable, I, I, I could not argue with, with that point on the simple basis that's not the job of the military. But if you are telling me that 
we should not have gone into Afghanistan at all. I think I may have a problem with that because I think I think on net the projection of US of the of, of, of the military might of the United States is something that is noble on net. Okay. That does not mean we don't have misadventures. Oh God, I've, um I think um the, the <laughs> Vietnam War was I probably a, a, a serious more misadventure. Misadventures than, adve <laughs> than adventures. <laughs> yes, it was it was well if you want me oh we have a comment. War is a last resort. It can be ventured into when it's unavoidable. Well, I may have to agree with that statement. It's a yeah. sure when it's, it's unavoidable. Evil. Yeah. Yeah. It's a necessary well, well, evil. And as, as we're kind of getting short on time, let yeah, me uh, jump real sure. quick. Uh, I want to take a quick parting shot, though, where there was one or two real quick things. One is um, with respect to policing, you know, I mean, if, if when we start policing, you know, I mean, it's sort of like the rest of the world doesn't necessarily agree that we should be the police. Right. I mean, so the fact that we're out there and deciding what should be police, there is kind of a, you know, a, I guess an authoritarian issue there. You know, I mean, we may say, hey. We're, we're, don't worry, we're the good guys. <laughs> but that's not always seen that way. So I just wanted to leave that in. Another thing, too, with respect to declaring war, I think at least on a moral level, it's not required constitutionally, but I, you know, the fact that we have this fiat currency and the fact that the government doesn't necessarily advertise the cost of a war going into it, you know, they sit there and they, you know, essentially print money in a lot of cases. Um, that's something where I think also a, a, a moral thing for a government to do with its people is to say, hey, look, if this is something we really all agree on, here's the price tag, too. And we're going to we're going to raise a tax for this war. We're not going to sit here and just print money. But that, so I think that's another issue as well. But Jason, on your last point, though, then that, that's our fault as taxpayers. I, because I agree. our elected representatives yeah. vote on these dollars. They vote yeah. on it to, to, to whatever use they're going to put it to our tax dollars. And sure, some of it is quite objectionable. I would agree with you on that. But our elected representatives are voting on these things. So that's yeah. our fault. As taxpayers yeah. are not policing, not policing the people who, pull, who are using our dollars for, for their adventures throughout the world. That's our fault. Well, I wanted to jump into this other thing. Tim brought this to our attention the other day. And this is a way as libertarians, maybe we can get involved in, in trying to push for less of this military adventurism or misadventurism throughout the world. And that's defend the guard, which is, uh, Tim, I don't know if you wanted to sort of take the lead on that since this is kind of, your yeah, <laughs> in, in a nutshell, these, um, these wars out there, a lot of it are utilization of, uh, national guardsmen from States by the federal government in these forays into foreign lands without, um, a, uh, a declaration of war or even an AUMF that, that is actually applicable to that particular operation. So what Defend the Guard wants to do is uphold the Constitution, like it says, and require that before the federal or the, yeah, the federal government can utilize National Guard from states, <clears throat> state National Guardsmen or women uh, to, to go over to these foreign um uh, forays, uh, military forays, before they can do that, it has to be a declaration of war. I'm not sure if they even talk about AUMF in there, but... Um, they don't. They don't, Tim. But okay. go ahead. Okay. So um, so that's what they want. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Let, how about this? If you, it's an AUMF, you got to use regular troops, federal troops. If, it, if you want to use the guard, you got to declare war. It's got to be a declaration of war before you can take the the sons and daughters and blow their legs off in these stupid, nothing but stupid, nothing ever comes of them. Oh, they got bin Laden. Oh, yeah, I'm really still not really sure why they threw his body into the ocean. <laughs> I mean, it's like every other federal thing. It's as opaque as the side of the aircraft carrier's hull that was used to dump Bin Laden's body into the ocean, okay? That's how opaque it is, okay? Nothing is out in the open. Nothing is transparent. And I, for one, don't like that, okay? So, um, you know, because uh, the, the truth is always the first casualty of war. And this this has never been uh, more the case than in recent times. And about 
Okay, I could go on and on. I gotta stop. <laughs> we right. know, we know, Tim. We know you can go on. <laughs> What's time for our knucklehead noise patrol? Okay, but let's uh, do yes, it. I, I definitely agree. That's a good note to end on. That the truth is the you know uh, the the casualty first casualty of, of first war. Casualty. Yeah. Yes. But, you know, uh, you have no disagreement from me on that point. <laughs> <laughs> well, as far as people just bending the truth and uh, twisting our constitution and our government. Uh, so I got to talk about our, our recent foray into court packing by the uh, by the Democrats. Uh, so they are pushing now a bill to add justices to the Supreme Court. And surprisingly, it's just enough so that Democrats will have control. <laughs> Apparently, that's the magic number. You know, there's no there's no study from, you know, any particular group saying, no, no. hey, you know, justice is better achieved with 13 justices <laughs> or whatever the number is. Yeah. You know, it's just simply... What number gives the Democrat? Oh, that's it, right? <laughs> but anyway, here, here's here's Jerry Nadler. I mean, uh, literally, uh, just new speak on stilts, right? I mean, you know, yeah. as, as Orwellian as it gets. Uh, Jerry Nadler talking about the recent bill to uh, uh, to uh, as, essentially to pack the court, and he said some people will accuse us of packing the court. We're not packing the court. We're unpacking it. <laughs> <laughs> Senator McConnell and Republicans packed the court over the last couple of years. This is a reaction to that. So literally appointing justices is packing now and fill in, unpacking. Fill in vacancies. Just, we add in more. <laughs> yes. Fill in statutory, statutory um, 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 vacancies. That is packing now. Yeah. Talk about redefinition of words by these wonderful people. <laughs> they always have some new definition. Something always have to be tweaked just to make us understand their intent a little better. You know what we need to straighten this all out? We need a vaccine for against stupidity. That's what we need. We need a vaccine to straighten out these people's minds because what, what, something in their brain does not work right. Don't don't have the government do it because it'll probably get the wrong effect. <laughs> It's true. It's it true. Make all of it's us true. believe, Nadler. <laughs> <laughs> Did yeah. anything on the packing, unpacking? No, I, no. <laughs> I mean, I, I've I've talked too much already, uh, and I just want to give Leon, uh, you know, it's fine. Whatever, how much time he needs, and so yeah, I agree with the, all that too. Yeah, he's absolutely right. <laughs> Uh, I mean, and and then you know, it's 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 going to just cause the Republicans to want to pack when they get a Republican exactly. president in there, and so yes. then there'll be then there'll be four new ones, and then six, and eight, and ten, and twelve, and pretty soon there'll be one hundred and eighty nine judge judges on the Supreme Court, all from unpacking. Uh, yeah, all from unpacking. And it's time yeah. to pack up another show. We've reached the end of our time. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks so much for joining us and stay free. We'll see you next Indeed. time. <laughs> Bye. Thank you for watching the Knuckleheads of Liberty. Listen each week in Sacramento on Comcast Channel 17 for Knuckleheads of Liberty on Monday at 5.30 p.m. and the Libertarian Counterpoint Show on Thursday at 8 p.m. Also on YouTube, Facebook, and podcasts everywhere. We invite you to come again next week for the Libertarian Counterpoint Productions.